Hi everyone, I'm Eric. I'm working in a win-win corporation and as a, a hardware technical supervisor. And here is my colleague Clement, also working in the women corporation as a hardware uh, assistant technical manager. So thank you for everyone to attend in this workshop. It's great to be here and uh, meet the people face to face. And so let's get started to today's topic. Uh, it's the implementation of the multi-partition boot in the CPU with the DCSCM. So you may see some keyword here. It's the multi-partition boot, and it's uh, related to the little bit two kind of boot mode. The first one is the multi-CPU boot mode, and the other is the partition CPU boot mode. Also, we could call it the uh, independent CPU boot mode. And uh, it's control all related to the DCSDM, and we will have a detailed uh, detail introduction later. And uh, I would also like to say that it's uh, just introducing the concept and uh, it have not achieved now. Uh, maybe you have seen some similar application before, but uh, I would say that it's not exactly the same. So we will have an open discussion and uh, we'd like to know your thoughts and we maybe we, can, we could have an idea exchange. So here is the content. Uh, for the, this multi-partition boot, there is many uh, consist uh, for topic. The first, we will go to have a detailed introduction for the multi-partition boot. And uh, then we will have uh, explain that why we are going to use this multi-partition boot. And then we will have a very high detail, uh, very high level uh, multi-partition boot uh, design introduction. Then mm, we will, let this one, we will list out some uh, uh, challenges and also have a comparison of the different boot mode. So what is the multi-partition boot? Uh, the multi-partition boot is uh, mainly implemented into a multi-CPU uh, system. So you can on the right block diagram, it's uh, basically a server and the list server is uh, consists of the HPM with the multi-CPU. And we just take the CPU one and CPU two, for example, and uh, the system, the, this server is put up only by one DCSCM. So this is uh, typically what the server uh, work like. And uh, so in the multi-partition boot cases, that we will have uh, two kind of boot mode, so we can switch between these two mode. The first one, so it's the uh, we, we have mentioned before, right? And uh, it's a multi-CPU boot mode. The multi-CPU will boot up together. And uh, the other option is the independent boot mode. That we can, you can see it on the very right size uh, picture that we can plug in uh, two or more DCSCM. So each DCSCM can boot up their own uh, CPU. So you can see the difference here in the multi-CPU boot mode. Uh, just only one DCSCM to put up the whole CPU, so there will be a legacy CPU and the others are the non-legacy CPU. So if we choose to use the independent boot mode, the each of the DCSCM can put up their own CPU, so that means that each CPU could be the legacy CPU. So we are why we are designing this multi-partition boot and what is the advantages? So that uh, we have see we have so that uh, there is more and more cores in uh, one CPU, and we are going to uh, support a higher um, computation. We were using the multi CPUs uh, in a C in a system, and uh, it will have advantage to ha get a higher computation with the multi CPU. But uh, it will also get uh, some risk because you it's concentrating too many on the multi-CPU system. And if you, uh, your one of your CPU get to fail or your only DCSCM get to fail, I think the whole system will shut down and uh, it will be a big, big risk and disaster, right? So here is the multi-partition boot what could be the solution because uh, it could have a balanced advantage and also get a risk spreading. 
So if you want to go to have a better, uh, higher computation, have a better performance, you can have choose to the multi CPU boot mode, and that means your legacy and non legacy CPU can uh, communication together to get a higher performance. And uh, if you don't want to let uh, get too much uh, computation, and uh, you also want to lower the risk, you can choose to have an independent boot mode. That means you can have a risk spreading, and uh, you can have a multi DCSN to boot up your CPU if you uh, one of the CPU get to fail or your DCSN go to fail. The other system could still working on, still can uh, working normally. So that means that we provide more flexibility to the user case. You can have this, you can implement this multi-partition boot into your system, and uh, based on your application to uh, switch between these two kind of boot modes. And uh, next we'll go to a high-level design for this multi-partition boot, and we'll pass to the Clement. Hello, hello. Yeah, this is Clement, also from Wayne Corporation. So for the following f uh, uh, topics, I'm going to discuss about the high-level design of multi-partition boot. So from big to small, for this slide, I'm going to introduce the system configuration you might have. So I have three kinds of configure listed right here. From the table you see here, from top to bottom, it's A, B, and C. So it's referred to the following, uh, the, the bottom picture. So for, wait. So for A, um, A and B, as you can see, A and B, they have the same system configuration, two CPUs and two SCNs. But the, the different will be the boot mode. So just like Eric have mentioned, we have two kinds of boot mode. So for A, you could choose to use independent boot mode, but the same configuration, you can also choose to use multi-CPU boot mode. And we put the C SKU right here, C configure right here. C will more be like a typical two-socket system you will see normally. So it has two CPUs and only one SEM. So it only supports the multi-CPU boot mode. So if you are a user that you might seek for um, seeking for more flexibility, you might want to use A and B SKU. So you can change a different kind of boot mode. So going more details. So this is uh, um, zooming into the board design. So I list some of the key components here. The first one obviously is SEM because SEM is a key part SCN is a key part in this design. So next will be CPU, could be legacy or non-legacy CPU. And the third one will be CPLD. So C BMC will inform CPLD about which kind of boot mode they are going to use right now. And then CPLD will change their output, output signal. <coughs> and the fourth one is the MUX, which means a multiplexer. So the MUX will also receive a MUX select pin from CPLD. So uh, it will switch the signals that go into CPUs or going to other device to the correct port it should be. Depends on which kind of boot mode they are going to use. Okay, so these are the at least four key components here. And then I'm going to introduce a, a boot sequence we have come up. So there will be seven steps for the multi-partition boot, boot sequence. The first one will be SEM, they will power on first, definitely. And second, uh, because they have a lot of SEM maybe in this system, so they need to choose the which one will be the main SEM. So it could be like hardware method, maybe a dedicated pin like poor high or poor low, or maybe they can use a firmware method, like use I2C to communicate between SEMs so they can know which one will be the main. And third step, so the users will tell BMC which kind of boot mode they are going to use right now, independent or multiple CPU boot mode. And fourth, then BMC will inform CPLD about the current boot mode, fifth. 
CPU OD are output some signal to uh, CPU. So CPU will know if they are legacy or non-legacy CPU. And six, so CPU OD will also have a signal to a MUX. And seven, so in the end, system will boot up. So that is the seven step will come up. Okay, so we also have an important topic that there might be some possible challenges for this multi partition boot mode. So there's a table here. I had had a comparison between multiple partition boot system and a typical two socket system. And I list four comparison items. Uh, you can see in the table if I list it like yellow will be is a disadvantage and green is advantage. So the first item, comparison item, is the SEM quantities. So in order to have more flexibility, the, the multi-partition boot system will need to have two SEM, compared to typical only one, so it would cost more. So, so the cost will be a disadvantage for the multi-partition boot system. And the second item is the usage, usage flexibility. So uh, multi-partition boot mode can switch between different kind of boot mode, while saying again and again. So you have more flex flexibility. So it can also refer to like power saving, like if you don't want to use two uh, socket all the time, it, you can just use one, so saving powers. And also computing capability is more flexible as well. And the third item will be if there is a, uh, um, CPU one had a more malfunction, then in multi partition boot, only half of the system will fail. And the fourth one is the design difficulty. Because this is a new concept, so it has a higher uh, design difficulty compared to a typical one. So we are not saying that multi partition boot is the uh, is, uh, uh, best solution. So there are some pros and cons you can see in this table as well. Okay, so the last is call to action and open discussion. So call to actions, we we have uh, we have uploaded a white paper in our website about this. It will elaborate more about this uh, multi partition boot mode, and also you can uh, send out a le uh, email for us, Simon and Eric, and that's one will be open discussion. I'd like to know, thank you, and let know anyone have questions or feedback to us. Thank you. Well, thank you. We have uh, two microphones if anyone has any questions. If not, I want to thank you. Here's my, oh, wait a minute. Okay, could, could you take the page to compare the one socket and two socket? Okay, from your design that currently, can you think that, can we use one DCSM? Can we use only one DCSM? Yeah. For multi-partition boot? Yes. Uh, mm, no, I, I, I think in current design, no, but in future, definitely it might be uh, possible if the BMC chip itself can support, only one BMC can support multi-node. Maybe we can think more well. Oh, okay, okay. Another thing is that you only compare the DCCM is kind of thing, but for a server currently, for a two socket server, there is only one leak. But if you cut to two, two system, two one socket system, you need two NIC. It's a server, it's not an isolated server. It needs to have the North Pole to communicate with the outside. Okay, so how will you have two NIC? You want to have a spare NIC sit there? And, uh, can we take this offline and we can get to our... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Can, we, can we close this and get to our last session? Kay. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, we will get to you. Okay. Let's go ahead and thank our speakers. Let's, uh, last speaker, come up.